In this set of lessons, we're going to begin to learn about power chords. Now, power chords are a little different from the open chords that you learned in either Guitar Fundamentals 1 or on your own, the chords that exist down here, in which every chord has its own shape and its particular shape to the chord. A power chord, on the other hand, is one formation, it's one fingering formation that moves up and down the neck without changing the way your fingers are formulated and yet based on where you put it on the neck it makes a new chord. The letter name of the chord will change. So the reason that this is really cool is because you can make all kinds of chords that might not have been comfortable down in open position just by where you place the power cord on the neck and it's all going to be your fingers in the same exact shape. Now, if power chords aren't necessarily your thing in terms of style of music, that's fine. Stay with me here though because this is an excellent, excellent way to learn about the neck of the guitar and a whole lot of really interesting and important things about guitar theory. So. If you turn out to be a, a power chord lover, that's great. If instead you use this section more as a learning experience in how the neck of the guitar works, which is extremely important, that's great too. So in the next lesson, let's learn how to make a power chord. So in this lesson, we're going to learn how to make a power chord. So we're going to start with the index finger and placing the index finger on the sixth string on the third fret. Okay. Then I want to go on to the fifth string two frets higher with my ring finger and on the fourth string two frets higher in the same fret with my ring finger. And so I'm holding down three notes. The sixth string at the third fret, the fifth string at the fifth fret, and the fourth string at the fifth fret. Three notes. This is the essence of the power chord. Interestingly, what we want to do is avoid playing all the other strings of the guitar. In other words, with the power chord, we will only be playing the lowest three strings of the guitar. The way to make that kind of foolproof is when you're using your index finger here to press down your bass note, your root note, let the rest of it lie a little bit across the strings so that they are muted. So that when you hit the three strings you want, if you happen to go over the line, they're muted, okay? So the chord is the first, the lowest three strings, and then everything else is off limits. So now what I'm going to do with this power chord, if I want to change it to a different sounding chord, I'm going to keep the configuration that my left hand fingers are in in exactly the same um, pattern. I'm going to move the whole thing and I'm going to go up two frets to the fifth fret through the seventh fret. You see that? I'm moving the whole thing as a unit. Once again, lying my index finger down very lightly to mute the highest three strings just so that they're out of trouble. And playing the lowest three strings. And I can continue to move this exact shape any place on the neck that I want to and it will change the chord. We'll get into later on what the letter names of those chords are and we'll be using them in songs. But for now, what I want you to get used to is just the idea that it is a shape that can move and can move and can move. And that's all you gotta do. So in this lesson, let's learn how to strum a power chord to get the most out of it. So as you learned in how to make a power chord, it's only the lowest three strings that we're going to be using when we play the chord. And we talked about a technique of lightly laying the side of your index finger across the higher three strings to just sort of block them off as a little bit of a safety in case your pick happens to wander in that direction. 
Um, but meanwhile, let's take a look at the right hand and how do you go about strumming something that's only the lowest three strings. One way to really help dial that in is to make sure that your anchor point here with your uh, extra fingers on your right hand is really holding you close to home. It's not a tight bond, but it's really holding you close into the string so you've got a lot of control over the pick. Rather than trying to go like this and hope you're only going to hit those lowest three strings, really um, sort of narrow the field there a little bit by, by tightening in your, your grip a little bit. The other thing that's really cool to do with power chords is palm muting. So basically what I'm going to do is let this part of my hand touch the strings gently and then pivot into position so that there is actual contact along all the strings with my hand, but it's very light. Okay, so when I go and make my power chord, it's a little bit muted, right? As opposed to no palm muting, right? So it's a really cool technique because it also helps really control the fact that you're playing only those three notes and it creates a really nice sound. So practice making a power chord any place on the neck that you want as long as your fingers are in that configuration of your root note on the sixth string and the next two strings over two frets up from that. Anywhere you want, but plant your power chord and then work on the right hand technique of really dialing in how are you going to strum that. Let's focus on down strokes. How are you going to strum that so as to hit the lowest three strings the way you want to and avoid the highest three strings? In this lesson, we're going to talk about tips and tricks for moving from one power chord to the next as smoothly as possible. So I'm going to start with our original power chord that I showed you where the index finger or the root note of the chord is on the third fret. So I'm going to build my power chord. And when I want to move from this power chord to another one, I want to keep in mind that my fingers are basically riding the rails of the strings. You do not want to let go. You don't want to rearrange them. You don't want to let them lift away at all. But you don't want to maintain full pressure either. What you want to do is maintain full pressure when you want to hear that chord. But when you get ready to move it, lift the pressure, but don't let go. Slide it and press it down again in the next position. Lift the pressure, but don't let go. Slide it, press it down. One thing you'll notice when you are moving your power cords up the neck is that the further up the neck you get, the closer together the frets are. So that's a little bit of an adjustment that your hand is gonna have to make. The, the further up you get, the tighter this angle is gonna be. So that's going to just be something you gotta get used to as you practice these chords. So go ahead and practice just randomly picking a power chord, lifting the pressure, sliding to another position, replacing the pressure, play it again, slide to another position. It doesn't matter at this point which position it is. You just wanna get used to that move of not letting go not holding too tight, and adjusting for the fact that the higher you get, the closer together the frets get, so your fingers are gonna have to squeeze in a little bit. So let's jump right into making some music with power chords. In this lesson, we're going to learn a groove using three power chords all right next door to each other so it won't be too hard to move around and we'll aim towards playing that groove right along with a band. So let's start with our original power chord that I taught you where your index finger is at the third fret and your ring and pinky fingers are at the fifth fret on the lowest three strings. What we're going to do rhythmically is simply 
downstrokes at about this pace. eight of those in that position. Then we'll slide up one fret, the whole chord, and eight in that position. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Slide up one more fret and do it again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And work our way backwards. So now we're at the fourth through the sixth frets. Back home to the third through fifth frets. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now, of course, we're going to try to do it seamlessly without little pauses in between, so it'll sound like this. etc. So practice that a little bit just to get used to making those switches right on the beat. And now let's try playing it together with a backing track and I will talk you through where we're headed all the way along the line. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So go ahead and practice that along with the track and be patient with yourself, give yourself time. This is not real easy stuff. And in the next lesson, we'll do just a full play along with the track. I will not talk you through it, we'll just make some music. So in this lesson, we're going to go right ahead and make some music with power chords, playing right along with the band. It'll be a pattern that we did in the last lesson, which is to start with your power chord rooted at the third fret to the fourth fret to the fifth fret, and then back, fourth, third, and then we'll go through that cycle once again. So I will count you off and bring in the band, and let's make some music. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So go ahead and practice that along with the backing track. And in the next tutorial, we'll start to get into learning to name these chords. And this is where it gets really important in terms of how you can develop a much greater understanding of the neck of the guitar. It's going to lead us into the direction of bar chords, soloing, all kinds of really fun things. And keep in mind also that all of the techniques that we're talking about in these lessons on power chords, even though I'm playing them on the electric guitar, apply exactly the same way on the acoustic guitar.
So we'll see you in the next tutorial and we'll make some more music with power chords.